Praise the Lord, everybody. Yes, we are here to lift up the name of Jesus. What an incredible God we serve. And I'm truly excited, humbled, and honored to serve you today. And what am I serving? I'm serving up the food, the meat, the word of God. I hope you're excited about the word. I hope you are ready to receive the word of God. Last week, we had an incredible introduction to this series. What now? What do I do when I just don't know what else to do? And if you were here, you already know the answer is to seek the wisdom of God. It is to get into the word. It is to understand the value of information and application so that you can use the divine revelation that God is giving you as you study the word of God. And I pray that you have taken this week to get closer to God by getting closer through the word that you've done the work on the front end, that you've begun to ask God, show me, show me the right path, show me the way, show me how, show me when, show me who, just show me God. And so I'm excited that the word of God today is going to be a continuation of that. It's going to take it a step further. Last week was what now? But I know that, you know, after you get the information, after you get the revelation, you want to know what next? <laughs> what do I do next? And that's a big question. It's a powerful question. And my prayer is that I am able to unpack and unload the word so that you're able to receive what's next. What's next? Let me not move any further without thanking God for Jason Tyson, who opened up worship for us. Yeah, it was a very impromptu spare the moment thing. I just called him off the piano. You are, you're used to hearing him in the keys, but I called him away from the keys and said, come here. I need to put you on stage today. And I'm, I'm so grateful that he consented. Okay, sure. No problem. Wholeheartedly. And he got the service. He did the call to worship. So he, he called us into the presence of God and then ushered us through the praise team into the, into the, the glory of God so that we can receive what God has in store for us. If you're ready, in the chat room, blow it up right now. Say, I'm ready for a word, Pastor. I'm ready for a word. What now and then what next? I don't want, while you're looking for this, let me give you the text so you can start looking for it now. It's Joshua, the first chapter, the 10th verse. Real simple, Joshua 1 and 10. When you found it, I think this is the new international version that I've had uh, that I'm using today. But when you found it, shout hallelujah and amen, because you found the word. You have found something more valuable than anything you could ever imagine. It is powerful and it is potent and important. So you need this word in your life so I can help you understand what next, what next. Before I forget. Uh, some of the Victory Walkers, several of the Victory Walkers, you've had some challenges in this season. I've gotten your letters. Okay, family, pastor got your letters. They, they make it through a channel and a chain of people, but eventually they make their way through me to me. And so I got the letters. A couple of you have written and you have some very distinctive questions, some deep questions and some great questions. And so God is going to give me exactly what I need in order to be able to speak to, preach to, teach to, or even bring people in to address some of the concerns and the doubts and the things that you are just wrestling with, the real life issues that you're wrestling with on a regular basis. It's been a long time since I've done this, okay? It's been a long time since I've done this, but I think I'm going to do it again. Look for an email blast. If you've registered, and you're part of the victory network of people that you've gone to our website, getthevictory.org, and you have registered with the church in the ministry and you've signed up or put your email address in our system, I'm going to blast something out to you. It's a questionnaire, all right? And I'm going to do a sermon series that I haven't done in some years now. It's called You Asked For It. You Asked For It just that simple and because you ask it's going to give me release and understanding well god will give me release but it'll give me uh, an inclination to dig in that area and ask god to give me release to preach on those specific topics now mind you every one of us has a lot going on no doubt we all have a lot going on so i cannot preach in one month on everything 
but I will do the best that I can to cover as many as I can. And some of them will be, they'll kind of line up with each other. And the word of the Lord, it's good for every circumstance. And so I just pray that God will use me and use you to actually ask the right questions to give you, you know, asking the right question is a very important thing. You know, sometimes we don't, we don't get the right answer because we don't ask the right question. So seek the Lord for wisdom. What now? Seek him for wisdom so that he can give me the grace to be able to preach and to teach into your circumstance. Amen. Come on. If you with me, shout, I'm with you, pastor. I'm with you. Go to getthevictory.org. There'll be a link on there uh, so that you can sign up and be in our system. All right. In iConnect, you can be a part of our iConnect system. If you're not, don't worry about it. We've got more information that we'll throw at you or throw your way so that you can be a part of this process too. I want to hear from you. I just want to know what it is that is burdening your heart, what it is that's plaguing your life, what it is that you are wrestling with in this season so that I can preach or ask God for release to be able to preach and teach on whatever it is that you may be wrestling with. All right? You with me? All right, cool. First, I'm sorry, Joshua, the first chapter of the 10th verse reads as follows. It says, so Joshua, order the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land. The Lord, your God is giving you for your own. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp, tell all the people, get your provisions ready get ready for what's next get your provisions ready three days from now three days from now you will cross the jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the lord your god is giving you for your own mm. So this just dropped in my spirit. This is not really, it's not in my notes, but I, I want to give it to you because it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Three days from now, God says, I'm going to send you, I'm going to lead you into a new territory. You're going to take possession of something that you have not possessed before, but I am giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. But note that when he says, get ready, make your provisions, three days from now means essentially that there is a term or a time ecclesiastes says it this way for everything there is a time and a season i think sometimes we feel like we have all the time in the world and we lose our sense of urgency because we become complacent and comfortable but god says no what i have for you might be challenging it's going to require work it's going to require you to do some things but it has also attached to it a time for everything the Bible says there's a time and a season. So when I see three days from now, it's an indication that there is a term, there is a time, there is limitation already placed, chronological limitations placed on what it is that God is going to do in your life. So I pray that you listen attentively. I pray that you open your heart, that you pray and you seek the Lord on what your role, what your purpose, what, what your path is in this season, in this new transition that we're in. As I said last week, we're transitioning into a new place, new space, new season. But God is going to give all of his people what they need in order to be fruitful and to be prosperous in the next season. That's my prayer for you. and That's my prayer even for this sermon today, that God would give me what I need to tell you. After you've asked what now, let's deal with what next. Pray with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the privilege of preaching. I thank you that out of all the fruit on the tree, you saw fit to choose me. Thank you for this moment. Thank you, Lord, for giving me grace to be able to speak life into dead situations, to declare and decree truth, to energize and mobilize and move your people from a place of complacency and dormancy and let them realize that even though the world stopped, you did not. And our purpose was set before a pandemic. And our path has already been made plain for us through Christ Jesus. Send the Holy Spirit now to speak life to us. To open our mind and open our eyes that we might see clearly. And at the conclusion of it, God, please, please get the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What next? What next? All right, here we go. So... Most people, 
never really get to the answer for that particular question because they never take the time and deal with what's now. It doesn't matter if I sit here and give you a formula and give you all the information and insight and or give you concrete step, steps to take or, or any of those variables. It, it will not matter if you don't deal with the what now. Because remember that wisdom is the principal thing according to the word of God and wisdom comes from God. So until you decide to download from him, to hear from him, until you decide that God is, is necessary and you make the necessary steps to make him the forerunner and the head of your process, then what next will never matter. Because you can put together everything in the world to get you going and to get you on the right path or to get you into the next. But if you don't have God in it, anybody can testify that it will not be sustained. If he is not the head of it, if he's not in front of it, if he's not Lord over it, then you're setting yourself up for a setback. So the first thing is to ask or answer the question, rather, what now? And the only person that can answer what now is God. He is the author and the creator. He is the finisher. He is the one who has divine favor and authority over any and everything that we do. So I hope and pray that you spent the time that was necessary to deal with what now, because I'm excited about giving you what's next. And, and the fact that you're even considering this question, I'm so grateful that you're considering this question because there's a lot of people who are so comfortable, so complacent, or even so comfortable in their miserable situation that they will not seek God for revelation on what's next. Even that you're willing to ask that question is exciting to me because it means that you, just like Paul, you've come to an understanding that I count not to have apprehended. In other words, I am not there yet. But this one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind, looking forward to the things which are before, I will press, which means that anything that is being pressed has something that is pressing back or resisting it in its process. So you are willing to press, which means I will push through the resistance. And sometimes the greatest resistance is not external. It is you. It is internal. So I am applauding you, celebrating you. I am jumping up, dancing and screaming and shouting because you've been willing to ask that question. What's next? It says that you embrace the reality that there is something great and greater for your life. Every round with God, you've heard it. We say it all of our lives. Every round goes higher and higher. New mercies every single day. We go from glory to glory. And so we thank and praise God for all of us, all of we who are faith walkers, who have embraced the concept that God is not done. My purpose has not yet been fulfilled. If it were, I wouldn't be here and or he would be descending from the clouds with a shout. The sky would have been rolling back like a scroll. The dead in Christ would be rising first. We who remain would be caught up with him, uh, uh, meet him in the air. If this were not, if it were that our purpose had been completely fulfilled, we wouldn't be here or God would be on his way back. So the fact that you are here, I want to encourage you to get this in your spirit. There you are somewhere on the pendulum of time and purpose that there is something else that God desires for you to do and more glory that he wants to receive out of your life, out of your service, out of your sacrifice, out of your time. He wants to see you fulfill and maximize the potential that you have on the inside of you. You are here for a purpose. You are not done. There is a next. And I have to drive that into your spirit because I don't want you to feel like I'm too old. I'm too. If you think you're too old, ask Abraham and Sarah. Cannot God come in the, a dead circumstance and situation, turn it around and breathe new life into it? God is a miracle working God. And he's so masterful that he does not allow us to get to the place uh, where, where he, he cannot get greater glory out of our lives. So asking that question, the inevitability of that question, the urgency of your need to answer that question, let that be your driving force today. Let that push you beyond your place of complacency and pull you into the full promise of God for your life. God is not done. I need you to 
get that in your spirit. And I'm going to drive that in today because God is not done. There is a next. And I remember some years ago, I preached a sermon. I actually wrote a book. I have not released it yet, but I, I preached a sermon called I Got Next. I Got Next. And so if that's your testimony, if you're ready to receive and embrace what God's revelation, what his impartation, what, what he is desirous of in your life, then I just need you to hit me in the chat room and say, Pastor, I got next. I got next. It'll be my house. It'll be my vocational track. It'll be my career path. It will be my business. It will be my children. It will be my practice. It will be, but God, I got next. I want to fulfill everything that you have for me to fulfill. And I want to do it, giving you glory the entire way. Praise his name. Romans 12 and 6, right quick, in the English Standard Version says this, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. Did you get it? Having gifts that differ according to the grace that was uniquely and specifically given to us. There is a grace on your life. There is something that you are graced or gifted to do that is uniquely and specifically set up for you. But then the scripture gives us this admonishment. It says, let us use them. There is something that God has purposed you to do. That's a huge part of your next. So what you need to do is spend some time finding out and, and knowing what part of the body are you. The Bible says we're many members and we're part of one body. Which part of you? If we don't know what the functionality or the purpose of the portions of our own body are, can you imagine how miserable our existence would be? If we had hands, but we didn't know what they were for. If we had feet, but we didn't know how to use them or what they were for. So your time, your passion, your energy has to be spent figuring out what part of the body are you? Because you have been uniquely and specifically and specially and, and incredibly gifted or graced to do only what you can do. And so it should be a passion for you. It should be a burning portion of your day to figure out, God, what is my purpose? What is it that you have uniquely graced me to do that nobody else can do the way that you do? The, 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 the 16th number of Psalm, the 11th verse says, you will show me. The psalmist says, you will show me the path of life and in your presence fullness of is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, pleasures forevermore. God will show me the path of life. That's why it was imperative that we asked the question last week. What now? What is the wisdom of God for my life? What is the strategy? What is it that you would have me to know? Because God says, I'll show you the path of life. I will show you. And, and, and I love this because in his presence is fullness of joy. And there are pleasures at his right hand, not just temporarily, but forevermore. And so in the text today, you see Joshua and the camp coming together, assembling and getting ready to ascend or to cross the Jordan River and go and conquer or take authority over what God had promised them. The first chapter of Joshua, the first verse, is a very powerful declaration that, is, that God gives to Joshua. Joshua is following in the footsteps of an absolute giant in the faith. He is, he is following after Moses who had been responsible for leading the great exodus from Egypt and even navigating the, the rough terrain or the, the time or season of the wilderness for the people of God. He was a man after God's heart. God had a, a passion for Moses and he called Moses into his presence and deposited or downloaded into him at the top of the mountain all that Moses needed to lead the people. So he was a great man of God who had great wisdom, had a great track record and great experience with God. God had led him through great conquest and, and, and literally positioned him in front of the people so that he could lead his, God's own chosen people into the land. But if you read the record, you will see. Moses and the people that he was leading out of the wilderness or into the wilderness and trying to lead out of the wilderness, they did not make it to where the destination really was. But there were two, Joshua and Caleb, who were the successors of, of Moses' generation. And all the people of the nation, they were successors of their forefathers who had come before them. And they were on the brink of entering into a new season. In other words, just like us, 
They were at the threshold of a transition. They were literally about to cross into a new season, new territory, new, new things, new, new cultural concepts, new, new, new approaches, new, tech, new technology. Come on, somebody. They were literally on the brink of crossing over into a new season. And the first verse, first statement out of God's mouth to Joshua was absolutely jaw-dropping. He says, Moses, my servant, is dead. In other words, what was yesterday is no more. The leader that I chose yesterday is not the leader for this season. The person and the path, the, the principles or the methodology rather, and the approach to doing ministry and or for conquering new territory or how we even lived in this 40 year wilderness experience, that season is over. Now you're about to cross into a new season. And as you cross into this new season, let me make this declaration so that you are, you are very clear. The last season is dead. But then he goes on and he gives them promise and he gives them principles. He says, listen, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Be not afraid. Be bold. Be very courageous. He said that a few times with emphasis. To make sure that they understood that it will not be easy. It's not a cakewalk. You're not just going to skip across the line. It's not going to fall in your lap. What's next is coming, however. Because not only did he give them, did he give them the principles of their practice and where he wanted them to go, but he gave them the promise. That was the most powerful thing because the promise says, I will be with you and this is what I am about to give you. See, that's why the what now is so important, because it's in the what now that God will show you. You will have thoughts and dreams and ideas that you never fathomed on your own, but God will download and deposit it into you because you're still or you're, you're, you're in tune enough to hear from him. So after asking what now, God says, this, here's what's next. What's next is that you need to be courageous. You need to be brave. Get yourself ready. Don't worry about it. I'll be with you. But the last season is over. Here is where I'm about to take you. And so I want you to look at verse 10 again. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people after receiving the instructions of God, after hearing what God had told him, after getting the promise, after understanding the practices and the principles that were necessary in order to acquire or to, to get the promise or get to the promise. After all of this, here's what Joshua did. And these things, these things that Joshua did, are, are, they, are, they are examples for us today. They're the template. They're the design. It's the model for us. So if you want to enter into what next, this is what it's going to take. you got to act like Joshua. And just in case you, you have not skipped over already and gotten to the end of the story, the people of Israel, the, the children of God, rather made it into the promised land. They got to where God promised them they would go. So the moral of the story is they win in the end. And, and, and at that same token, at that same regard, I need you to understand this. Watch this. In Joshua 1, so Joshua ordered the, the officers of the people, here's your practice. Here's your steps. This is what you need to do. First of all, decide. The fact that it says, so Joshua ordered the officers of the people. So because he received the promise, because God gave him the practice, because he believed and trusted the principles of God, because of this, he gave orders to the officers, which has to conclude. We have to conclude from that concept alone that he made a decision to trust God. He decided the first thing that you need to understand if you're going to go into what next is you need to make a decision. I know that sounds pretty trivial and menial and minuscule. It may, it may, be, it may seem futile to, to many of you, but please understand that's a very powerful, powerful part of this process. If you don't first decide that you want to explore, experience, and trust God for next, then you will stay paralyzed in your present situation. At some point, you have to make a decision that I want everything God has for me, and I am willing to go after what's next. How many of you have already decided, I want what's next? If that's your decision, that's your choice to say, he's preaching to me right now. I want what's next. He decided the greatest fighter of in 
of decision is indecision. Yeah, your greatest enemy of you making a decision is you not deciding to do something. You would rather sit in nothing than to listen to the voice of God, seek and hear the wisdom of God, take the instruction of God and do something. And there's a lot of reasons why people don't do anything. Sometimes it's fear. It's lack of faith. It's, it's the cancellation of your confidence in Christ. You don't believe God's going to do what God says he's going to do. You're not. It's so crazy. It's so radical. It's, it doesn't make sense to you in the, in the natural. So you don't have the capacity to even embrace it in the spiritual. But at the conclusion of the matter, you're going to have to make a decision if you're going to see what's next. Uh, one of the worst things in the world, I live, uh, I live in, a, in, a, in a division where there's, uh, uh, there's, there's an option. You can go left or you can go right. When you come into the entryway, you can make a left or you can make a right. And coming off of a busy street, I'm coming into my neighborhood one day. And as I turn into my neighborhood, there's a car who's lost or undecided. They don't know which way they're supposed to go. And so they stop. After entering maybe a few feet into the entry, they stop, but they're blocking traffic. And, and I'm trying to get in off of busy street, off of a busy street, but they're blocking traffic sitting at this one spot because they don't know whether they should make a left or they should make a right. And so I'm saying the whole time, you know, I've got a, I've got a driving anointing. And so. Something comes over me, and maybe it comes over you too. You can testify the same. <laughs> but but I have a I have a driver's anointing, and I'm you know I'm saying to myself in unknown tongues, please hurry and move and get out of the way. Now I may not have said it quite like that. It may not have been the same way that other the term and tone and, and tonal and, and and terminology that I use. You know, the tone might have been a little different, but I wanted them to go. And so they sat there without moving. And I said, just go. Now, of course, I didn't say it to them, but, you know, I kind of tapped the horn a few times, you know, so that they would understand. Just go. Just go. There is something around each corner. Just go. Here's what they didn't realize. That if you come into the subdivision and you just go left or right, it's a circle. They're going to go. You're going to see the same exact thing. So I'm saying to myself, and I'm telling you today, that many of you are stuck where you are, but what you don't realize is if you just decide to go, you're going to run into exactly what God desires for you to have. So your what's next is being held up. Because you've not even made a decision. Decide. Did you, did you hear me? Decide. Decide that it's not okay for me to be okay. It's not okay for me to sit idly, to sit still. That's not what God's desire, design, or will is for your life. Because it, it produces fruitlessness, which is a sin. If you don't believe me, check the record. Remember, he came up on the fig tree. Fig tree he said, you got a whole lot of leaves. You sound like a believer. You talk like a believer. You lift your hands like a believer. You might even pray like a believer and sing like a believer, but I see no fruit thereon. I don't see the evidence of your confidence. Your faith has not yielded. And, and even if you produce a temporary fruit, he says, no, I need you to produce fruit that remains. That means it comes out of the birthing from my own spirit into your life. And you're not going to be able to accomplish all of those things if you don't go decide. Some people will never get to next because they haven't dealt with what's now. And if they haven't dealt with what's now, they won't decide to do what's next. Uh, put that where you can feel it. Second thing that you need to learn from Joshua today. Joshua, he sent orders. He says, hey, I believe what God says. Go get your stuff together. Get ready because we're going. Three days. I'm putting a time limit. There's a term on this. We're moving. We are moving. Put a time limit on yourself. I will go from X to why, by when. Learn that formula. Put it where you can feel it. Put a term on yourself. I will go from X to Y. Let me explain to you. Some of you won't do it because you're afraid that it won't happen in the time that you set or it won't happen the way that you, you anticipated happening. So what? 
Trust me, whenever God alters your plans and alters your actions, trust me, it will always work for your good. But you will never see God do what God can do as long as you're not pursuing what's next. Let me, let me give you this second thing. Second thing, you need to, you need to decide and then you need to delete. Whoo, you didn't see that one coming, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, no, make a decision and then delete. I know, I know that's not the most exciting news, but there are some things that have to be deleted. And here's the thing about God, because God's purpose and his plan is so powerful in your life. If you won't delete it, God will delete it for you. Uh, put that where you can feel it. I don't really want God to have to push the delete button on my behalf. I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I want him to be proud enough <laughs> that I can turn to him and say, hey, I, I turn from my own self. I turn from my flesh. I turn from my will. I turn from my, doing it my way. And God, you don't have to delete it. I've already worked it out. And so, so you, you, but you will have to make a decision to release and to deplete and to get rid of and to heal from some things that are behind you. There are some things that you have to deal with in your life. If you don't deal with them, you can't heal from them and you cannot get what's next. There are some things that you're going to have to wrestle with and wrestle through, but they have to be dealt with. They must be deleted from your path. Many of you are driving, looking in the rearview mirror. Many of you are driving and you're anticipating what was so you can't embrace what's now and you'll never receive what's next. We live in a cancel culture and, you, you know, it's we cancel people for anything. There is no grace anymore. We've lost our sensibilities and we've lost our capacity to understand that the same grace we cancel or refuse to give to somebody else, you're going to need it. So you also have to understand because many of us, and I wanted to make sure I threw this in because many of us, we're in this mindset, well, yeah, oh yeah, I got to get rid of these people. I'm going to check these. I'm going to scratch these people off my list. Uh, before you start canceling everybody. Before you decide, oh, yeah, I got to deal with some stuff, that means I got to get rid of all of these relationships, get rid of these people, not reconcile, not seek peace, not seek for, for, for uh, uh, understanding, not bring yourself to the submission of the word of God, which says if you've got an ought, go deal with it. As a matter of fact, before you leave your offering or before you worship God here, go and deal with your brother. Seek peace. Pursue peace. Yeah, many of us have gotten so caught up in this cancel culture that we've forgotten that we need people. So I want to caution you before you cancel or delete everybody. There may be some things that need to be deleted, but you cannot afford to delete all the people because you need someone. So understand that even, even your ability to heal, you got to wrestle with these things. You've got to heal from them. You've got to leave some things behind, but your ability to heal is tied to people. I want to let that sit in because I just threw somebody's theology in a tailspin. I know that you you literally probably almost about to lose your mind right now. But your your healing is caught up and is directly tied to people. OK, you don't believe me. Turn with me in the Bible. Here we go. First John one and nine says, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So forgiveness, no doubt, comes from God. You have it? Forgiveness. God says, I will forgive your sins. Now, go to James 5 and 16 and check that out. Therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. So it is God. I know this is a mind blowing revelation for some of you, but it is God that gives you forgiveness. It's your brother or your sister from which you receive this healing. Ah, Come on, somebody, because their responsibility is to pray to the Lord and the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So your healing is tied to your ability to have relationship, fellowship, friendship, covenant with people. You're going to have to release some things from yesterday. And part of that process is connecting with the right godly people. You want to know why fellowship is so important, why life groups are so important? 
why we've been pushing them. It's because we recognize the value, the merit and the importance and the power of you being connected to people. I know that you don't, I don't really deal with women because I don't, I hear that all the time. I don't really deal with these people or I don't deal with that group. You know, I don't really get down with, you need people. Now it's got to be the right people. You don't tell everybody, you just, you, but you tell the right somebody and you check the fruit. That's how you know. You check the fruit and make sure that it's a person that, that God has sent. But you need somebody that you can talk to, somebody that you can confess to so that they can cover you in prayer. And then you can be healed, leave yesterday, delete the things that are holding you back, and move forward into what's next. Ah, I know that's heavy. But you will never be, uh, you will always be rather sick as your secrets. Somebody, somebody you need to talk to so that you can receive your healing. Delete. Delete all the things and find the freedom of God. Deal with the stuff that is behind you. Go to God for forgiveness, but understand that people will help you through the process of healing. Now, uh, here, here's, the, here's the one thing that, now, I, I, I noted. After the decision, they had to get over yesterday's bad mindset. The only reason that this generation was able to make it is because they were not a part of the generation that told God, we are not big enough. There's no way you can do this for us. There's no way. We look like grasshoppers in their eyes. How can we get this promised land? There's people already there. There are giants in the land. So deleting means getting rid of old mindsets, getting rid of past hurts, getting over the things that are of yesterday. But don't miss this next one. After deletion, after you delete the things that need to be deleted, you need to develop what you have in front of you. Are you with me? Here we go. Very simple. When Joshua sent word through the camp, he said, get your provisions ready. In other words, develop what you have because I am about to do something absolutely incredible in this next season. So I need you to take advantage of what you have and determine what's needed in order to go and, and go after and get to what's next. What's in your hand? What do you have? What do you possess? There is absolutely no reason, no way, and no excuse for us not to take advantage of what we possess in this season so that we can see what God is about to do. And that's why seeking God for what now, that's why seeking him for wisdom is so important because God will show you the reason you're seeing the problems you're seeing is because you are part of the solution. The only reason people can walk by something all day long, but you walk by it and you're stuck in your tracks because you can see there's something else that needs to happen here. Well, the reason you can see that is because you're part of the solution. It's possibly part of your purpose, which means that you need to speak to God and say, listen, here's all I have. Show me how to use this. And then you need to develop what you have, information, education, equipping yourself, seeking knowledge, seeking counsel, shadowing people. A lot of people won't, won't ever go to what's next because you're too, you're too puffed up in pride in your what now. You're so caught up in what has been that you won't release it. Not even, and sometimes the release is not even, thank you, Holy Ghost, it's not even your bad things. It's not even unpleasant situations, circumstances, feelings, emotions. Sometimes what you have to release is your past victories. Ooh, let me let that sit in for a minute. Because you've been so victorious on the previous level that you don't realize to go to a new level, you start back at one. And if you're not willing to release your nine or you release your 10 and start back at one on another level, you're never going to be able to continue in what's next. And, and know that it's very important that you understand it's not just what you have, but it's where you have it. In the 92nd number of Psalm, the 13th verse, it says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. In other words, your environment determines the level in which you flourish. Where you're planted, where you put what you have makes all the difference. It's not that you have, haven't had access to what you have access all this time, all these years, but you've had it planted in other places. 
And it hasn't been planted for God's purpose, for God's people, for God's intention. And it hasn't been planted in a way that will allow God to get great glory out of it. So guess what? It doesn't flourish. So where you plant it is equally as important as what you have and what you plant. And here's what you need. Your development process is simple. You need passion. You need people. And you're going to need a purse. <laughs> yeah, it takes resources. You need passion, you need people, you need a purse. Now, what if I don't have one or the other? Seek the Lord and go ask the people. Trust me, the Bible says good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men, people, pour into your bosom. Your greatest blessings will come through people. That's why you can't be so insulated and isolated that you do not allow yourself to access the outside world or get in fellowship and community with people. Because some of your breakthrough, you will mention a need and somebody will say, oh, I got an extra one of those. I'll bless it. I'll sow it into your situation. I'll give it to your ministry effort. I'll give it to what it is that you're pursuing in this season. But you'll never see that. You'll never discover it if you don't have these three things, passion, people, and, 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 purse, and purse. Now, here it is, real, real simple. Passion is necessary because it's not going to be easy. You will pursue with everything you have in you what you're passionate about. Nobody has to beg you and plead with you to do the things that you're passionate about. You will do it if you got to do it all night long. I'll never forget, I used to stay up all day, every day, all night, every night playing the piano, writing songs, writing music because I was passionate about it. Now I'm equally as passionate about his word. I will literally stay up all night long. I, will, I, walk, I walked all day yesterday, just me and God. I spent hours, hours with God yesterday, just walking. Before I knew it, I had walked miles and didn't even realize how far I had gone because I'm so passionate about learning, about growing, about developing in his word. So you got to have passion and you also have to understand you're going to need people and you need to count up the cost you need the purse you need and i don't mean that in a literal sense i mean that in a financial sense you need increase you need wealth you need resources now you don't limit how god can do what god wants to do i never make a choice to pursue god's purpose for my life based on how much money i don't have did y'all get that let me say it one more time. Everything I've ever done has not been based on how much money or how many resources I do not have. I am so determined that I know who God is. And if he gave me a promise, a practice and some principles, and he told me that's the way to get it. And that's where I'm supposed to be. I take off walking. I'll start in that direction. I don't do foolish things. I do calculated risk. I do wise. I use wise counsel. I'm not crazy about it. So I don't want any of you to think that you could just walk off your job. Well, pastor told me just start walking, so I'm going to leave my job today. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, but if God told you that this is what you need to do, you need to be working towards doing that. You need to be preparing right now, developing. Decide, delete, develop, and here's the last one, and I'm done. Do it. <laughs> I know it's not deep. It's not deep at all. Just do it. Nike does not have an exclusivity on that when it comes to the kingdom saints. We have a divine charge. Go! Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go, go, go. Over and over in the text, over and over in the scripture, you see him say go. Go to a place that I will show you. Go to a land that I will show you. Go to this promised land that I've already prepared for you. Well, it's inhabitants there. They look like giants. We look like grasshoppers. Go. Go. Go to the brook Besor. I'm going to send a raven and he'll meet you. it'll meet you there. But go. Over and over again. He says, be mobile. Go. You cannot sit idly and expect it to just fall in your lap. But go. 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 Just do it. What's next is not about what they're going to hand you. It's about what you're going to go after. It's about what you're going to do. What now? God, I believe there's a what's next. I'm going. Sometimes I have to, I've had to say this to the congregation over the years. I'm going with 
or without you. And there may be people that you have to <laughs> you have to make that speech to. I'm going. Now make sure it's not your spouse, okay? <laughs> okay? They have to go with you. They have to go with you. You got to pray and ask God to do what God needs to do. But go. Do it. Just do it. You got this. I believe in you. With everything in me, I believe in you. I believe in you. And more importantly, I believe God. God is so faithful. He is so incredibly faithful. that if you put your trust in him, he'll direct your path. He'll literally send his word to be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. He'll cause all the resources and my God shall supply all the things that you need. Not according to what you have in the bank, but according to his riches. Everything that I've been able to accomplish and achieve and to do and acquire and build in life has been not because I had all the answers, I had all the resources or even the right people. It's not been because I've had all the, the money that I've needed. It's because I've had all the faith that was required to step out of the boat and walk on water. Really, you know, he didn't really walk on water. When Peter stepped out of the boat, he really... He really walked on faith. And so if you want to know what's next, it starts with a confidence in Christ. And the way to build the confidence in Christ is to first of all have a relationship with them. You can't have confidence in somebody you have no relationship with. That's a difficult task. So the more you know him, the more you walk with him, the more you learn of him, the more he's able to be a blessing in your life, the more confidence you will have. And so my prayer is that you will give God your life today. Have confidence that, number one, he will save you. That he will rescue you from an eternal hell and damnation. That he will lift, lift you up from this world, this circumstance, your circumstantial situations, and he will elevate you. He says, you've been made to be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's what he desires for you. So all you have to do to start the journey of what's next is first and foremost receive Christ as your Savior. And then he says, I'm not just going to bless you there. It's not just for eternity, but I've come that you might have life and that more abundantly. God says, I don't want to see. My desire is that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Jeremiah 29, 11, I don't, I don't have a plan to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. That's God's desire. It's his design. It's his way. It's his will for your life. And he's waiting on you to make that choice. So family, pray this prayer with them as I pray along with them. Come on, we say it together. Lord, thank you for this day and for preserving my life for this very moment. So I admit I've made some mistakes, but I'm so grateful that you've forgiven me. And I believe that you died. And by faith, I believe you were raised from the dead. And with this confession, I'm excited to say, say it with conviction, I am saved. Yeah! I celebrate you and I celebrate with you. To God be the glory for the things that he is about to do in your next season. To God be the glory. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word and I ask that you would saturate our hearts and our minds with truth. Drown out the noise. Kill our ignorance with your truth and get the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. To God be the glory for what he's about to do in your next season. What now? What next? And what then is coming? Pay attention to the announcements and I will immediately dismiss you thereafter. Hey there, thanks for joining us online at Victory. We are so glad you chose to worship with us today. We pray today's message brought you hope, healing, and empowerment. We want to connect with you. So if this is your first time joining us or you would like to connect with Victory in a greater way, text CONNECT to 38470. You can also visit our website at getthevictory.org. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for daily inspiration and encouragement. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch up on all the latest sermons.
Your giving makes a difference, and Victory has made giving simple. Text Get the Victory, Get the Victory BC, or Get the Victory VC to 77977. Select the giving link, enter the amount and gift type. If it's your first time giving, you can enter your payment details. Then simply confirm your gift. You can also cash app Get the Victory by downloading the app in the Apple or Google Play Store. Our daily prayer call is shifting to online prayer requests only. If you need prayer and would like to have one of our intercessors pray with you, visit our website at getthevictory.org forward slash need prayer and a minister will reach out to you directly. Join us today right after service at our Bolingbrook campus at 1 p.m. for our first ever Pray It Forward event, hosted by our Pastoral Care and GYA Give Yourself Away Outreach Ministries. Food donations for this event will support Loaves and Fishes Community Services. Help us to reach our goal to collect 10,000 pounds of food to help over 100 families or more. For more information, visit getthevictory.org. Life groups are the way that we do life together at Victory. Small groups sharing like interests with others in our Victory community. Have you ever been interested in hosting your very own life group? Well, join us for an informational meeting on Saturday, May 29th at 10 a.m. Summer sessions are starting soon, so register today at getthevictory.org. Until next week, Victory Walkers, keep walking in victory. Hey, family, I pray you had an incredible time in the Lord today. I am truly excited about your next. I'm so excited. God's going to do something amazing in your next season. I know that we're in a tough time. There's a lot going on. Racism, classism, sexism, and all the other isms. Sin is what it boils down to. And there's some tough questions that you have. So I pray that you would go to the website, shoot some questions my way so that I am able to grab them, begin to pray and ask God for my what now so that he can help me to give you what next in that regard. And then we can move forward into what then and, do, and see what God's design and desire is for our lives. So don't forget, go to the website, getthevictory.org. Or if you're already in the system, don't sweat it. The survey is coming to you. We just want to know what, <laughs> what you asked for. And I'll do a sermon series called You Ask For It. In addition to that, don't forget today, don't forget today from 1 to 3 p.m. We're praying it forward. Yes, I said it right. Not paying, praying it forward. Pray it forward. If you haven't already bought your groceries or bought the supplies or the things that you're able to deposit and to receive the prayer as you run through the park and not run as you drive through the parking lot, it's not too late. Go to getthevictory.org and you can see the list. Please, again, it's not everything. It's not the perishable items and all of the things. Don't go in the back of your freezer and hook us up. No, we're good. We don't want those greens from two Thanksgivings ago. No, we're good. Give us things that we can bless and sow into other people's lives. Go to the website. You can get more information. But it is today. It's not too late. Run and get your groceries and then come on. Pray it forward. We will be here. The intercessors, the evangelism team, they will be here to pray for you and for your car, uh, your carload of people or whomever you bring through here. We just want to be a blessing in your life as we all bless other people's lives. We will feed families. We will feed families for a month, I believe it is. I think so. I, I, I think it's a month, but we will feed families all for a week. That's what it is. So thank God for being able to supply food for a whole family or for families for a week. All right. We're really, really trying our best to, to make sure that even in a pandemic, that we are still committed to being the church. That's who we are. That's what he called us to do. And that's a part of our what next. Don't miss next week. What well, then? God's got a word for you, and I can't wait to give it to you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for everything that was seen, said, and done. I pray that it be pleasing in your sight. Let this word hit somebody's head and heart. Transform their thinking, their thoughts, that it might transform their actions. And you get the glory, God. Now may the grace, the love, and the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us, not just now, forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. See you at one o'clock today. If you're in the Chicagoland or the Victory area, Bolingbrook campus, we'll see you today. If not, you can still sow. You can still serve. Be blessed. God bless you.